Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. I didn't plan on doing a video today, but there's a bunch of stories out that I really wanted to cover, including some that almost no one is discussing. So I figured I would handle it in this format to get it out there quicker, and so I can finish a few other things that I'm working on. Like, for example, I finally got these cards in that I'm going to be sending along with the CPUs for the Gamer Meld Rewards program. Now, for those who aren't aware of the Gamer Meld Rewards program, it's basically where every three months, $5 patrons who were subscribed for the previous three months get a small gift. For those who are interested in that, the deadline for the next gift was the beginning of this month, but the following gift I'm hoping to do an old PCI Express GPU. I can't guarantee it, but I found a couple possibilities. Either way, check that out in the description below. Anyway, today we've got a near 6 gigahertz memory overclock from MSI, a new 56 core Intel CPU, yet another CPU vulnerability, Navi 12 and 14 are coming and quite a bit more, so let's just get right into it. Starting things off, we have MSI who announced a new DDR4 overclocking world record. They actually got this bad boy up to 5902 megahertz on the MPG Z390i Gaming Edge AC motherboard, obviously by MSI. The record was set using a couple HyperX Predator DDR4 modules as well as MSI's motherboard and of course liquid nitrogen. Obviously this isn't something you're going to be able to use for long periods of time, but either way 5.9 gigahertz, that's pretty wild. Next up for today, Intel released a new CPU, and this is actually double the cores that Intel's ever had on a socketed CPU. It's part of their new Cooper Lake platform, and it's going to be, a, from what I understand, it's going to be a part of the current 9200 series, except unlike the 9200 series, it's actually a socketed CPU, and it will remain on the 14 nanometer process, which is a little bit disheartening, but somewhat understandable. The weird thing about this is that it's actually launching next year alongside their Ice Lake processors. And what I found weird about this is that, for those who don't know, this was announced the day before uh, AMD was going to be launching Epic, and obviously this is just another one of their, hey, hold on, don't get that, wait until next year and get our thing. But why in the world is the thing they're announcing to overshadow AMD a 14 nanometer CPU? I don't get that. You would think it would be their 10 nanometer CPUs unless these aren't that great, which I'm thinking is kind of an indication that these are going to be more like low core count CPUs, probably because they're still having issues with yields now. I don't know that for sure, but it seems kind of apparent here. Either way, this 56 core processor, they didn't give us too much details. It does have double the cores, and because you can get a dual socket motherboard, you can get up to 112 cores, which is definitely really impressive. It has three terab up, up to three terabytes of memory. So it's, it's definitely pretty nice, and we can actually compare it to their current non-socketed CPUs of the Platinum 9200 series. You can see that they do have a 56 core already, but once again, this is a socketed CPU. That's the difference, and we'll probably be able to expect about the same frequencies to so the base clock of 2.6 gigahertz with a boost of 3.8. Either way, 56 cores really is something that's impressive for Intel, though at the same time, AMD's Epic is going to be based on their second generation Zen architecture. So we're talking seven nanometers. It's going to have more cords. It's going to be a lot more efficient. I don't really know what Intel hopes to grab from them. Maybe they're just trying to do this to distract and make people kind of second guess buying it. But until Intel can release something that's really impressive and not just a mobile chip on their 10 nanometer process, I really don't see that many server companies jumping on board. Next up for today, we have a new limited edition Xbox One X. It's a Gears 5 one. Uh, it is up for pre-order right now. And I don't know, It's this is obviously purely opinion based, but in my opinion, it does look pretty cool. I would like to see it in person. This right here almost looks like a skin. I'd rather see like actual divots and things like that in it. I feel like that would look way cooler, although obviously manufacturing costs would be quite a bit more. And it is going to be 499 MSRP. Next up, we have yet another vulnerability that seems to only affect Intel chips. This one is called SWAPGS. Okay, S-W-A-P-G-S. -S. These are kernel level instruction set uh, vulnerability. It's actually similar to the Spectre vulnerability, so it takes advantage of speculative execution so it goes into the side um basically it didn't it's hard to explain but ultimately it uses uh, intel's speculative so the cpu is kind of 
guessing what you're going to do, even though it's, it's a little bit more complex than that. But ultimately, really good news. Microsoft has actually gone in and issued a correction for it back in July. So of course, if you're on Windows, please make sure to do your security updates. This is always really important. Microsoft, like I said, has done it. And once again, though, this is uh, AMD. Yep. AMD gave this statement, they are aware that the research claiming new speculative execution attacks that may allow access to privileged kernel data. Based on external and internal analysis, AMD believes it is not vulnerable to these variant attacks because AMD's products are designed not to speculate on the new GS value following a speculative that test WAPGS. So yeah, once again, it's something that seems to only affect Intel CPUs, though this time it appears that it isn't going to require an actual hardware fix. And I can't, but I believe it was Tech Power Up that I saw it. Um, as far as the mitigations are concerned, uh, there does appear, I believe it was Tech Power Up that did this report, or they didn't do it, they actually reported on the report. But basically, there is slight, slight performance drop, but we're talking 1% to 5%. And from what I read, the vast majority of it is about a 1% drop. Either way, a performance hit is a performance hit, so obviously that, that really does suck. Next up for today, we have a really new story from 4Onyx. For those who don't know, they basically discuss um, Linux updates and things like pretty much everything to do with Linux. And recently, AMD's new DRM graphics driver for DRM Next had a few unreleased GPUs, or at least uh, support for some unreleased GPUs. The new GPUs that they found were for Navi 12 and Navi 14. And according to them, or at least uh, based on rumors that they've heard or just general rumors overall, Navi 12 is expected to be the RX 5800 series, which is obviously going to be better than the 5700 series. This is likely your RTX 2080, 2080 Ti competitor, which of course, uh, because of the, the recent stuff that we had heard about them getting rid of Radeon 7, this makes perfect sense. Then the Navi 14 series, which in my opinion is really the most exciting of it because this is uh, supposed to be the RX 5700 series and these, from what I understand, these are going to be replacing finally the RX 480. And I don't really mention the 580 just because that was nothing but a refresh. And then the 590, pretty much all of it is just a refresh of the 400 Polaris series. So this is going to be the first time that the Polaris series gets fully replaced. The other really big takeaway that we get from this is that Navi 12 and Navi 14 are almost certainly launching really soon. As they mentioned right here, Navi 10 support actually happened after the products were launched. So undoubtedly we can expect these really, really soon, hopefully in the next month or two. Either way, it's really exciting to know that AMD has GPUs that can compete with Nvidia's full product stack. And hopefully they're going to be able to do what they did with the RX 480 in the mid to low end range. So really excited to see this. Lastly for today, we have a story that originated with WCCF Tech stating that Lisa Sue was considering leaving AMD and actually joining IBM. Obviously that would put a really big dent in AMD's uptick because Lisa Sue has done a lot for the company as far as, I mean, we're talking, she's been a part of Ryzen. She's done pretty much what no one thought was possible. I mean, she pretty much single, I'm not, I don't want to say single-handedly at all, obviously engineers and things like that, but she was the main leadership that drove AMD where it is today. But now I really quickly, I do want to say that this original story came from the same source, according to WCCF Tech, um, where they actually heard about Raja Kadori, Mike Rayfield, Jim Anderson. So obviously they would believe it, and I don't fully blame them for releasing it, but... Well, Lisa Sue herself commented and pretty much made it very clear this is untrue. A lot of times what will happen whenever you have something like this, and either they'll completely ignore it if it is true or even slightly true, or the, the person will kind of beat around the bush with it, say, well, you know, they'll use all of this uh, legal speak, I guess you could say, but she just flat out says it. Just for the record, zero truth to this rumor. I love AMD and the best is yet to come. Obviously, that pretty much says it right there, and I'm not really sure if I agree with them leaving the story up, although they did, and this this is purely my opinion, they did update it, so I mean, that is great, but at the same time, when these things are true, a lot of times they're ignored, but they're pretty much never outright stated, this is not true. It's not true at all, period. There was no mincing of words, there was no legal speak or anything like that. So I think it's pretty clear that Lisa Sue is not leaving. So for anyone that was a little bit concerned about that, I wouldn't worry one bit. 
So while that does it for today, I know I had a good bit of stories. Hopefully I covered it pretty quickly. I know I do like to ramble sometimes whenever I go through this type of format. But either way, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And let me know what your favorite story was down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day. I, st I still don't have a great, y oops, you, you. Okay, anyway, have a great day.